Ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Optimize Your Body podcast. And I've got uh, a, a great contact here that I met through Dr. Sean O'Mara, goes by the name of Caroline Labouchier. Hope I pronounced that surname right. Labouchier. Oh. Labouchier, damn. Slipping. I should have checked this. Labouchier. Okay. Okay. Just keeping it me. real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're off to a great start. Labouchier. Yeah. Absolutely. Labouchier. Is that, I haven't looked into this, is that, I'm guessing it's French? It is, but I'm not French, nor is my husband. It's a Huguenot, uh, a Huguenot French name. So it was when the aristocracy in France were either beheaded or ran away, and they ran away. I see. Interesting, interesting. So yeah. good to hear a good old British accent as well, you know, because I moved over to Australia about six years ago. Always nice to hear, you know, that home kind of accent oh yes yes i'm sticking with english and i, and I like to be on time too did that stay with you 100 percent. is that a british thing yeah because it's like it's almost like an you can't be late you just can't i can't be late you and i get there and you know, here especially in dubai um they'll still be setting up at the arrival time so eight o'clock mm. and they'll still be setting up and they'll say oh you're a bit early i say uh i'm on time actually <laughs> i'm english and I'm on time. 100%. That is a British thing, I think. It's my girlfriend's Brazilian. And I don't know if you've heard like Brazilian time. That's a real thing. You know, they just don't do, you know what I'm saying? They just kind of like, yeah, just rock up whenever you rock up kind of thing. You know, <laughs> that's how they do things. Oh, my gosh. I would find that so stressful. <laughs> Yin and yang. But yeah, just to kind of, I'm going to just introduce you and just kind of, I wanted to just read out what I found on you anyway. And uh, long story short for the, uh, for the audience, Caroline's a mother of two. Um, she has grown up children. Uh, for nearly 30 years, she's been a wife for nearly 30 years to a now retired senior British Army officer, modeled for the first time at the age of 53, uh, leads a full page campaign in eight editions of British Vogue. <laughs> yes, look at that right behind her there if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, and in Tatler, Hello and White Magazines, Caroline regularly represents the over 50s all over the world. Caroline's also equally at home in person as a confident public speaker, as well as in print and in movies, TV, and online. She has a strong fashion following on social media and a broad portfolio in diverse formats appealing to, uh, to a wide range of demographic. Go check her out. You can pause this now. Go check her out on Instagram at Caroline Labochira. Uh, Caroline now communicates her message of finding, her, finding your potential by inviting others into her life to see how she made her transformation, which we're going to touch on today. Caroline's also really passionate about encouraging all women to realize their potential. A qualified performance coach, she regularly meets up with women who feel a little unsure of their next step. And through all of her platforms, she shares her happiness and energy for life. Her work has an ageless quality, which makes her highly flexible. Has anyone ever, by the way, I was going to say, has anyone, while I was just reading that out then, has anyone ever said your name so many times within one minute? I just say Caroline. Well, like, yeah, I time. guess that, that yeah, you found a bio, I guess. One thing I was going to say, do you know the funny thing? I um, I said something on Instagram the other day about being 59, and I literally had an argument with somebody DMing, because I uh, answer all of my DMs myself, about being 59. She said, you're 60. You were born in 63. You can't lie about your age. I said, what? Where's this coming from? She said, I Googled you and it said you were born in 63. So therefore you are 60. So, well, that's wrong. <laughs> Google was wrong. I'm si I was born in 64. I'm 59 and I will be more than happy to tell you when I'm 60. But we literally had this argument about how old I was. Don't be ashamed about being 60. <laughs> It's hilarious, though, isn't it? Like nowadays, that's a, that's another conversation, right? But online, it's funny, oh, isn't it? Because a lot of great terrible. stuff that's come out of it. But it's like people just like search for problems, don't they? You know what I'm saying? Let me attack oh, this woman no. now. I, I, I'm I don't I believe what I say online. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything yeah. you see online is perfect. See, Caroline, there's no flaws. Well, I I very often say that my my memory is really bad. A lot of brain fog and. I don't use a filter because I can't, I would never remember which filter I had used. I'm certainly not going to lie about my age because I certainly would forget that. It, I mean, what is the point? It's yeah. so funny. So if you're not the sharpest with your memory, yeah, you're not going to be, lying is just going to dig you into a hole, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's kind yeah. of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fantastic. But no, we connected, didn't we, through a mutual contact, Dr. Sean O'Mara. And that was like, honestly, like you say then, that guy is an absolute beast. He is. He is. His energy. And, Insane. And great, he's got no, he's got, it just doesn't, yeah, passion, energy, just doesn't seem to fade at all in energy ever. <laughs> no, he does. Uh, and, and even when we're doing a live, because we've done a few about visceral fat, and I had my MRI, and we discussed the whole thing. But even when I go, can I talk? You know, in such an English way, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just talking, 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 and it's just—he is delightful um, and and incredibly knowledgeable. Yesterday we talked about. Uh, microbiomes because I've heard people talking about these and never really taken it seriously I don't have tummy issues therefore I didn't think that I had to think about gut health and even though uh, I've spoken to is it Zoe Zoe uh, or Zoe I don't know how you, I've spoken to them still it didn't hit home I've done the blue muffin test you know where you eat yeah, a heard about blue that. Dry muffin and see how long it takes to get yeah, through yeah Still didn't sink in, but yesterday's live, I am all over microbiomes. I've made an appointment on Friday to visit a guy who makes and does courses on fermented food. Wow. So exciting. That's the thing. When it gets delivered the right way from someone you uh, respect, an expert who delivered, that's what it's all about is how they communicate the message. That's what he is an expert at. Delivering it. it's very visual. I did a YouTube with him. I wasn't expecting it. He turned up. He had this big projector screen behind him. And it's the highest view video, surprise, surprise, I've ever had on YouTube. Well, the second, uh, because it was so valuable. It was just ridiculously yeah. valuable. I was and like, oh, I've got this guy on here. He's not scared of saying stuff. He, That's the you know, he, doesn't, he doesn't muck around. He says, I don't want to scare you, but you will die. Mm. In fact. People need to hear yeah. it. They need to hear more of that, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. yeah, and just one more thing on that as well. And he's honest about his own experience, right? He said, look, I was an expert, everything else, doctor, and I learned from a 17-year-old about nutrition who told me about paleo this one time. He said, I was lied to. He said, I was cheated, you know? <laughs> so fascinating. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I was just going to say, um, I know you live in Dubai, and I'd love to hear, I know we were just talking off air then, and just for the audience, I think it's just fascinating because I've got a lot of friends who moved to Dubai and stuff. What's it like living in Dubai? I'm just curious to know what made you move there. Uh, David was in the army. Um, and in fact, we've been married for 32 years. So I'm not sure that probably that bit in that bio needs amending. Add on the two uh, years. You've got to add that on, right? Because all those years add up. <laughs> they do. They do. And I still like, love and respect him, which is, I think, pretty good in itself. Um, so I followed him here. I was still in the follow me mode which I was very happy with. Um, and that was 13 years ago. Uh, I wasn't doing anything other than existing is a pretty harsh word, but, uh, you know, you're brought up, you're, you're molded, you're looked after by your parents and then boyfriends or husbands, and then you've got children and then it's nothing's about you. Anyway, we came to Dubai. Everything is possible in this country. That That is the, the best thing about it. You want something, you dream of something, you can go for it. There are, there are the odd negatives, but nothing in comparison to what it looks like in any other country when I listen to the news. The negatives are huge. The fact that you can't put anything down without it being nicked. It, here you can put your mobile phone down on the table and you can go to the loo and it'll still be there when you get back that's how you hold a table at starbucks you put your phone down and you go and order your starbucks wow it's similar oh, to, that. to be fair it's actually like that here in sydney as well it's actually Is very it? yeah, yeah yeah i mean well it depends which part but like in the eastern suburbs where i live it's very much like that as well but it's like where we're from, I don't know, but like where I'm from in Cardiff and Wales, you just don't do that. If it's not bolted down, it gets stolen from you, <laughs> you know? Well, I, I, my, my son had me following um, Watch Crime UK, which is pretty graphic. I mean, the machetes on the streets. Mm, it's insane. Crime Watch, yeah. Absolutely shocking. And yet I love London and I hope to go, and go, to go back in a couple of weeks. 
I I want to go back and I want to have a home there, but I don't know that I want to live there. That's the thing. London's like my, one of my favorite cities in the world. If anyone hasn't been there, I mean, everyone I know has been there. Like, yeah, this is it's just vibes, energy. It's got everything, you know. Mm. But then at the same time, apparently it's got a higher murder rate than New York now as well, which is really saying something, right? But it's the knife crime, isn't it? It's uh, it's pretty brutal. But you would like to move back there, though, just to clarify. Is your game plan to maybe move back there? But with I don't we know. were we, we were, during COVID. I was thinking of the parents, David's parents, my mum. It's really kind of time to bring the family together. My son's there. And then uh, it didn't happen. The prices skyrocketed. And even that we wanted to buy an old barn and convert it. That was our dream. We've been married for 32 years and never owned our own home because David was in the army. So we were always put in rented accommodation and we moved every one, two years. Um, so never having our own home, and that was fine. But I was hungry for that, to own my own home. And I have a vision board. Um, and it had pictures of this, this, these ideas of my home. Then one day I said to David, as I do, change my mind because I'm a girl, um, I think perhaps we shouldn't go back to England. We should stay here. So we looked and literally five minutes later, we bought a duplex, which we're living in now, which we bought last year. And, oh, the peace, the, the, the safety of owning our own home, which I've never had that feeling before, is incredible. It's just a great feeling. So we have this little duplex in Dubai and we're going to stay here. Awesome. Yeah, but it hasn't always been like that, though, is it, Caroline? If you don't mind me talking about this, I did read the article that you had on the website and stuff from Broke to Limitless. And I know yeah. your husband, David, at one point lost his job and you were pretty much, although as far as I know, you weren't living on the streets, but essentially you didn't have a home and you were trying to survive. I'd love to hear more about that story and when that was, because I know you were on a part-time salary and stuff like that, right? So that must end yeah. Dubai as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not a place to be homeless. Um well, I'd just like to say that, first of all, everybody's worst times are different. And so so my worst time is not the same as your worst time. But for me... But your worst time is your worst time, right? And that's the bottom line. Your worst time is your worst time. You. <laughs> yeah, your worst time is your worst time. Uh, we were... Uh, something went on. Uh, as wonderful as Dubai is, it has knee-jerk reactions to things, to worldwide things. The One of the things is that it can change a law overnight. Um, it, if that law doesn't work, then it will change it again the next day, which is fine, if you can remember what <laughs> the law is. Um, but but uh, anyway, all the British officers were sacked on a particular day because of something that happened in London. And... So you had a new contract and it was literally two days later, you're out. And we were living in military accommodation. We had to get out of that. And we had just paid off a piece of land in Canada where we were intending to leave, to, to go to. So in the grand scheme of things, yes, we had money, but it was in that plot in Canada. So we had no cash. And... So I sold everything, my sewing machine, which I'm still devastated about because it had followed me around the world and it had just, it was the best sewing machine in the world. That's such a um, British, that's so such a British have... thing, surely. You know, my sewing machine, that's got to be, you know what I'm saying, in our DNA. <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry to hear about that, on a serious note. One of, one of the jobs that I did was uh, I had been an upholsterer. I'd made curtains and, you know, this is just, it was one of those items that I just, shouldn't have sold but I did we sold everything and we then we were very kindly um offered an empty apartment that we moved to so we were sleeping on a mattress on the floor in that apartment the AC didn't work it was in the summer uh we've got two Hungarian pieces so medium-sized dogs they're sleeping in each side of a suitcase uh, my daughter she was sleeping on a sun lounger and there were nasty flies living in the fridge i mean it was just it was 
it was horrible for me. It was a really, really bad time. And I resented David because we'd been married for a long time. I married him in the army and in the army, you kind of feel there's this safety net. You're always going to have a home. You're always going to be looked after. And David's not the kind of person to get fired. So this came as a complete surprise, obviously, to both of us. So he was not in a happy place. I was in the depths of depression. I was also, I've been on happy pills. I'm really t- waffling here. I was on happy pills. No, 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 no. This is gold. I mean, I just appreciate you sharing <laughs> the story because you're sharing a lot of stuff here, which is uh, people will connect to 100%. Well, I've been on happy pills since I was in my 20s, uh, citalopram. And here you have to get, you have to go to the doctor and get a prescription every month. And so you have to pay to go to the doctor. You then have to pay for the prescription. And none of that is cheap here. And so cold turkey went off the pills, which meant I was crying all the time. Oh, woe is me. And it was just a really bad time. And you'll probably say this is okay, but it wasn't okay for me. David had signed up for Ironman, the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii, and he had already paid and entering these competitions. It costs a blooming fortune to be an Iron Man, by the way. You don't get any prize money. Um, so he was off to Hawaii, leaving Mimi and me and the dogs in this place. Big pissed off I was with that. And I just found myself losing respect for him because he didn't just go out and get a job. And I thought that he was more worthy and more capable, more able just to go and get another job. And so I was I was just in the worst place that I could be. And anyway, so Facebook popped up back then. I did Facebook, not Instagram. And my tarot card reader popped up. Uh, who I hadn't seen for years in Swindon, amazing woman. And I'd seen her a few times when we lived near Swindon. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just reach out to Ruth. And I I don't know why, I just did. And we got on a call and she said, you have to take control. David cannot take control at the moment. It is beyond him. You need to sort yourself out, basically, and get a grip of yourself. So that, so uh, I didn't want to hear that really, but it was exactly what I needed. And that was kind of the start of me realizing that I'm my own entity. And how long, how long ago was that when you had that little wake up call from the uh, tarot reader? Yeah, well, uh, would be six or seven years, something like that. Hmm. There's something you but said. You that- you're not going to change overnight, obviously, hmm. but it was, uh, it was uh, okay. Yeah, that was the moment where you started changing, right? And then you got the momentum in the right direction. But with with David, right? Now, you said then about the struggles you've been through, right? And I would argue that, you know, you have to. I I mean, I've only been with my girlfriend for like a year, but I do plan on, you know, a long-term relationship with her and the full works. But from what I've seen, you know, the strongest marriages and relationships are the ones that have been through, unfortunately, like any area of life, they've been through more shit together, essentially, so you've been down to the trenches together and you've come out the other side, right? And there's a lot to be said for that. Exactly. And an- another time, uh, I mean, obviously, we, the, I, I got my respect back. But at that point, I'm thinking, well, maybe. And I think David did say to me, just go home. Just go back to England. Um, and I'm thinking, well, divorce. You know, but I don't want to... I. I, I don't think I want to live without you. All of this is going on in my head. Um, so over a period of time, and I don't know how long it was, my respect came back for him and and, and we're stronger than another. But in, God, was it 2000 and, oh, I can't, I see, brain fog. Um, we, we did a hundred kilometer run in England. Wow. And... Honestly, I have never loved him so much as I did during that because we held hands, we walked the last week, we finished at two o'clock in the morning thinking that we were going to be finished way later, about 10 p.m. And we were in bits and gosh, we struggled, but being together was, 
it was incredible. It was an amazing experience. Amazing. That is a life-changing experience, though, isn't it? So again, surviving something like that together, going down to the trenches. And that's like that's something you chose as well. There's a difference between like pain that you don't necessarily see coming and what you actually yeah. bring on yourself, essentially, right? Because you chose yeah. to do that and you yeah. survived. We didn't it think it would be as hard as it was, but it was uh, it was tough. Yeah, yeah, I bet it was. Um, but yeah, just in terms of like just I'd love to hear more about because I know you you were a model for the first time at the age of 53, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how did that come about? And I'd love to know, like, because it just goes to show, right? When you, and you can see, which we'll talk more about, your picture of health. And that's exactly what Dr. He had, a, he spoke really highly of you, by the way, uh, Sean O'Mara. Oh, I know. Oh. I could blush when he talks about oh, me. Oh, my God. He's like, he's, first thing he said, he was like, this is, I just had a chat with her and you need to get her on. Right. So straight away, I made a note of it. I thought, OK, if he's saying that, let's do this. He said she's a picture of health. She's a and he was talking about the visceral fat and all that kind of stuff, which we'll talk about. But I'd love to know uh, how you got into that at the age of 53, um, first and foremost, and then like what life has looked like since then. Um, my daughter was working in London and her boss was looking for a grey model. And I'd never modelled before. I was a school receptionist where I had been for six and a half years. And as I said, I'd been a follower. I had never wanted a career. I was brought up not to want a career. I was brought up to be a wife back in the day. Um, and... It, I said, well, if, if you think I can do it, then maybe I can do it. Let's try. And they flew me to London. I got the job. And that's the result. It was the best day of my life. And my daughter always says, but it's supposed to be when I was born, not what, not <laughs> anything. I felt more beautiful than my wedding day. Wow. I, whoa, 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 whoa. I, whoa. I'm going to stop you there. That's a big statement. <laughs> I know I, it, the wedding day was not great, and I had a I had a big spot on my forehead on my wedding day, a proper Vesuvius. Um, uh, yeah, it was wow. it was not a great wedding. Yeah, for for, for a female, that must tough. Even for, <laughs> even for a guy, that's tough. Let alone for a female. Yeah, let's go for a fringe. I need a fringe. <laughs> <laughs> that's catastrophic on your wedding day. Bloody hell! I'm sure a lot of the females would be like anxious just thinking about that. Now let's get back to this. I know. Well, now I know that a dermatologist can, I don't know, inject or they can do something. Anyway, back then I didn't see a dermatologist. Now I learned in my 50s. I've learned so much more in my 50s than, than my entire life. Go and see a dermatologist and get your skin sorted out properly. Not by somebody who's going to be selling you serums and things. A really good doctor dermatologist and get your skin the best it can ever be. Because my skin is better now than it has ever been. It's going to cost you some money to go and see that person, but then you're sorted. So uh, why didn't yeah. I go? I never did that in my 20s, 30s, 40s. I would say anyway, that's the main thing, isn't it? Skin and eyes. When I look at you, see, right? I was saying to someone earlier, when you look into someone, someone's eyes, I just you just know whether or not they're healthy. You just look into their eyes. But your eyes are just <laughs> glowing. You're so vibrant. And the skin as well, right? That literally, those two things, I think, well, your, your skin especially, it just, that is the aging thing, isn't it? When you, because your skin looks phenomenal, that literally takes years off, like, your age, isn't it, really? Like, it's so important, but that's, go on. But talking to Dr. Sean, I now look at noses. Yeah. You know, when you talk about swollen noses in especially older men, um, but our noses do change. And I'm, I'm looking at actors and I'm looking, and I, somebody will pop up on screen and I'll say to David, He's not healthy. <laughs> Just by looking at his nose. <laughs> yeah, he was showing us all sorts of things in terms of the biomarkers and stuff, right? And um, but yeah, just going back to what you said then. So modeling and Vogue, you've been in Vogue as well, right? Yes. So, so I went for the went for the casting, and they said, "So, how much do you want for this? Uh, it'll be in British Vogue, um, but it's a big campaign." And having never modeled before, I looked at. David and I'm thinking, well, I I, I would pay you. Do you. How much do you want from me if I'm going to be in Vogue? Um, and uh, I said, a thousand pounds. Yeah. If I'd had an agent, it would have been ten times that. Yeah, or twenty thousand for sure. Yeah. 
Um, but but I got a thousand pounds for it, and I was very happy. And I bought a pair of Manolo shoes, which were my first pair of Manolo shoes. Nice. So that was that was like that must have been one hell of a feeling, right? So when you so fast, what what so what's your secret then, my friend? Right, let's get into your secret, right? Of optimal health. Fifty nine um, years old, right? And when was it you really started paying like really close attention to your health then, in terms of the from a holistic standpoint, you know, learning about the gut health, skin, strength, all that kind of stuff. Like, when was that? Um, my grandmother died when she was 97. And I think mm. that living in an old people's home has to be the worst thing ever. And in England, that's what we do. We, we, I'm not saying we send them, but that is just a rite of passage, passage isn't it? that the old people go and live in old She was there for years and she just sat looking out of the window. And sometimes I would say, I'm coming over. Um, I'm going to come and see you next Tuesday. And she'd say, um, no, uh, uh, I haven't had my hair washed or something. And, I, and I'd say, well, I'm coming anyway. But she was very proud. But mum is now, how old am I? I'm 59, so she's uh, she's 80. And she's living alone. She's lonely. She lives with her dogs. She doesn't want to live any other life than the life that she's living. But she's worrying about how she's going to pay for her old people's home. Even though we have said she can come live with us, that's, that, that is the way it yeah, that's, is for Of course, people. yeah. If you've got the resources to do that, that's just natural, isn't it? Well, yes. So she, So right now she sits in the dark at night time. Wow. No changing that. That's the, what she wants to do. Uh, she's scared of bills. She's um, won't talk about money because, again, back in the day, didn't talk about money. So she won't even tell us uh, how much she's got. What? How can we help you? Mm. Oh man, that was um, frustrating. So I think that's where it started. The the fear of that's what's ahead. Mm. Being in an old people's home, just sitting there. And then you fall, then you go into hospital, and then that's pretty much it, isn't it? Once you're in hospital with a broken hip, you don't always come out. A hundred percent, yeah. And so, so, what, um, so, so when was that then? So when you started, when was it? Because I know you said you had the tarot reader and stuff like that. Was that that was a, a transformational point for you? But then with your mum, when did all this start happening? Then where you started having a different perspective on this? I, th I think it, it had always been there from for, for many years. I've Got been you. a runner all my life. No, no, no. Mm. I did my first marathon when I was 50. Mm. So not a competitive wow. runner, but a, a, you know, a fitness runner and a bit of Jane Fonda back in the day. <laughs> and I, I like being slim. So that, that I got from my mum. Sorry about that banging. Is that okay? No, so I can't hear anything. It's all Very good. good. We've got neighbors. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, so I've always liked the way the feeling of my clothes fitting me slightly loose. I, I, I like, I don't like anything that doesn't fit, as in I've put on weight. So I like to be consistent with my weight. So I think that is, that's the main thing for me. So keeping the weight down kind of means that you're going to be healthy. Mm. We go hand in hand. So I've always done that. Then um, moving on, health, uh, and then I partnered up with the hospital here three years ago um, and was able to get tests done and finding out about my health, talking to doctors and going deeper into it. I don't remember pretty much anything that they say because I don't remember stuff. But <laughs> sharing the information is the most important thing. And that for me is, is the best thing that I can do. Sharing and being able to speak to some fantastic people. Mm. Um, so yeah, so, and, and then David's an athlete. Uh, he's a triathlete, he's an Ironman. He wants to win next year. He's determined he's going back to Kona. He's been there five times. And he wants to be the oldest person to ever finish an Ironman. Uh, How old is so, he now? How old is David now? Sixty. Sixty now, yeah. So that, that so 
I mean, the oldest person ever to finish one, or you mean the oldest one ever to finish one, like at a good level, like with a decent time, or like... no, just just finish. So you know, well into his eighties type. Thing, oh right, okay, I got you. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, because there's there's plenty of crazy sixty odd year olds out there who do I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but eighties that's yeah. another animal. Yeah, he, he, uh, and when when you go to Kona and you've got seventeen hours to finish, there's always somebody who comes in, and it can either be you know it can be two seconds over seventeen hours, and you're not an Iron Man. Mm. Um, so funny. it's uh, yeah, it's it's a thing that he wants. So now I'm I'm really worried about his heart health because he's had a, a men's check, mm. but hasn't had an angiogram I have had one and I know very happy and I could almost cry and I did when I was told that I have a healthy heart knowing that is one of the biggest things oh it's huge isn't it because with the heart it's, it's one of those ones where it's like when it starts beating it starts beating like the liver can regenerate itself and stuff the heart no and somebody, so I did, so I had an angiogram, did it, did a live with Dr. Butt. And then I got a message from a woman saying, I watched your video and I went to have a stress test. You know, when you walk on the treadmill, everything was fine. And I sat down and the nurse said, I just want to get the doctor in here. She went in for an angiogram and she had two arteries blocked 70%. So she was a walking time bomb. She had two stents put in then and there. And it, it actually it gives me goosebumps. That's um, scary. That's so that. scary. It makes me worry. Yeah. It makes me think, like, I need to get on top of this more because I'm 36, right? You know, I take it for granted. I'm like, yeah, I'm great. But I did some stuff in my 20s that wasn't ideal at all. So I'm like, I know I've reversed a lot of it. Hered- it can be hereditary. It doesn't yeah. matter that you did nothing bad. And, and athletes do drop dead. I know. I know. That's the thing. I justify it in my head. I'm like, no, there's, there's hardly any being, well, I know that I know one heart attack in my whole family. You know what I mean? And I justify it. Then I go, no, I'm fine, but I shouldn't. I should go and get this checked out. Now you yeah. give, Whereas give David's gas. father, has, he has a pig's valve. Uh, David's grandfather died of a heart attack. You know, it's, I've got to get him in for an angiogram. Well, mm. I'm just going to do it. Yeah, you definitely got to do it hundred percent. Just get him to do it because guys are a nightmare like that. I know a lot of people listening and even women with husbands or whatever. We're a nightmare most of the time. We just put yes. it off and we just crack. But on you them. know, one in three women die of heart issues. One in three. One in three. And That's one in up. 30 die of breast cancer. Jesus. And yet we have a whole month of breast cancer where people are not mentioning men because men get breast cancer too. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear anyone talk about men during pink October. Mm. You maybe did, but I didn't. And and then you don't have a a heart month. Mm. What are the fundamentals that you talk to like your audience about? Like, first of all, like how you live your life. I'd love to hear a bit more. And before we get into that, actually, I'd love to talk a little bit about for my female audience, because this is becoming almost like a, I don't want to say epidemic, but a common problem. And a handful of my clients. I've coached a lot of women now, but a handful of my clients, they've struggled with uh, menopause, perimenopause, postmenopause stuff. And I'd love to know your experience with that, with the menopause stuff and how you've managed to kind of like overcome or at least combat, not overcome, combat a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. On yeah. the other side now. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd love to hear about that. Nobody, uh, 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 nobody talked about it, obviously. Uh, my mum threw things around the kitchen when we were teenagers and we just thought that she was totally off her trolley, had no idea why. She didn't tell us, daddy didn't tell us. I should think probably daddy didn't even know. Um, so it is, it's my mission for men to know as well. You're gonna get rid of your wife who's menopausal because she's driving you crazy. Then what's gonna happen? You're gonna find a younger model. She will also become menopausal. Hello. Inevitable. <laughs> Come run away from that one, guys. <laughs> it's coming. So, Perimenopause can start around 37. So that's about 10 years before menopause starts. So tracking your periods, tracking your health, tracking how you feel. I don't know if you do that, but it, you know, we are hormones. So making a note, and you can get all sorts of apps these days of how you're feeling, because you may go to the doctor and the doctor, you say you've got a headache, he's going to treat the headache. Say you're depressed, he's going to treat depression. Find a good gynecologist, menopause doctor, somebody who is pro-HRT, but not 
pushing HRT so that you've got both sides of the story. Because if you go and see somebody who is anti-HRT, you're not going to get both sides. And there are many of those still. But after you found that doctor, it's still tricky. Um, and in fact, my gynecologist here is saying that she is more likely to try and help women holistically these days and wants to learn much more about it so that she is more able to give information. Mm. So yeah, I, I got through it. Women will say, oh yeah, I got through it, it was a breeze. But what happens after? Mm. I'm on HRT and I want to keep protecting, I believe that I'm protecting my heart my brain and my bones by being on HRT. Hmm. It's all very well saying I've been through menopause and I uh, and I didn't get any symptoms and I'm fine and just carrying on living a normal life, eating a normal diet. Hmm. Hormone replacement therapy. How long have you been? So you're 59 now. How long have you been taking that for? And what uh, hormones are you actually taking? The wine. Well, I should have started taking it um, much earlier than I did. Uh, hmm. Probably. Uh, uh, what am I now? Fifty nine, probably fifty four. I started looking into it when the sweats were just dreadful, and you just you just get wet. Suddenly, you just get drenched. I've heard sweat. that's the most that's the most savage thing that they all report back to me. Out of all the symptoms, they say you don't yeah. not understand these horrific night flashes where you're waking up literally like you've been swimming. Horrendous. <laughs> And the sheets wet, and it's just, it's most unpleasant. Um, I took ashwagandha for, oh. for sweats, and they did. It I, it's matter. one of my favorite supplements. I was just talking to someone about this recently. Like, I I mean, that's, out of all supplements, that's the only one I notice clients with sleep and with stress management and even some of the menopause symptoms. It's an adaptogenic herb, herb right, just for the audience. Great it supplement. does seem to be. Great I'm not taking it now, but perhaps I should uh, should get on. Yeah, to it. cycle but it though. I, I do you, believe like cycling it for like three or four weeks. So I hear the research now says you don't want to take it continuously because it like buffers oh, right. cortisol. But yeah, every three to four weeks take it and then have like three to four weeks off or something like that. Yeah, why not? Good. I'll look into that. <laughs> um, I do have osteoporosis already. I so I'm taking medication for that. I'm still on my happy pills, uh, and I have a thyroid. Uh, underactive thyroid which i've also had since my 20s mm. uh, and in fact my mum's on all of those also <laughs> i see and, and with the hormones you're taking now so what does that look like that's like testosterone like estrogen i stopped taking the testosterone a because i was getting whiskers really took yeah. it a bit too far yeah started growing a beard <laughs> only whiskers not a full i'm only joking i'm only joking sorry um, <laughs> i had to throw in some british humor there <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Um, and also at one point I felt I needed it more from the um I was gonna say courage, but that's the wrong word. During menopause, you can become um insecure, you can't speak to people the way that you used to be able to speak to them. And it can happen overnight that suddenly you're you you just lost all confidence. So I think it really helps in that case. But I'm much more confident now because I, life has taken over for me. I am, I'm helping people and, and I'm pretty happy because that's what I've chosen to do. And I think helping people does make you happier. Oh, it's amazing, right? We're in a, such a, we're really lucky to be in that position, right? Like literally where you're on the front line and you can change of health and you can literally change someone's life. It's yes. so amazing to, because at the bottom line is all humans, we're here to serve. We need to help others. That's where we get a lot of meaning and purpose from pretty much all of it. And it's just incredible, right? I'd love to hear a bit more about that in terms of how you help people and stuff. And uh, cause I know you generally, I'm assuming you help mainly like women in their fifties and stuff, if that's right, or is it just a variety of yes. people? More so uh, the younger generation being late 20s, 30s, they're wanting to know what's ahead of them, more so now, I think, than ever. It went through a period of time where the older generation were put to one side, hence, I guess, them going into old people's homes. Um, 
first of all, I'm not old, I'm middle-aged. I will be old when I'm in my 90s. So that's one thing that even I have to change that, that wordage sometimes. So if you have children, please make sure that they don't call the middle-aged people in their 50s because we're going to live until we're 100, probably, hopefully. Um, they're the old people. So the younger generation are realizing this and that we have some knowledge to impart in our in, in middle age because we've been through some shit. And, and so it's that age group. So I meet people of all age groups. If I get a DM and the person's here or even in London, I will generally reach out and say, would you like to meet for coffee? Maybe once or twice a week, I will meet a random person never met before and we will sit and have a coffee and they'll talk. And I love doing that. That's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's such, nine times out of 10, it'll be, I don't know where I'm going. I don't, I'm not excited about life. Um, my children are grown up. What am I going to do? Or, or I'm tired. My children are young. I, you know, what's life about? Finding a passion has got to be the number one, whether it's exercising, which you can get in and it can become, it can take over your life, um, or fashion, or writing, or listening to people, or speaking. Write down all of those thoughts and speak to other women because that's what we are, that's what we're good at, as you can tell. <laughs> Your superpower, yeah, the, the social, the social oh. skills. Yes, Super talk and power. listen. And, and in, all, in all of the no's, there'll be a yes. And if that's a little yes, then write that down and it can sprout. You can go sideways. You don't have to keep going forwards. And it doesn't all have to happen today. Mm. And when it comes to health, though, right, because that's the foundation, right? All that stuff, finding your purpose is really, really important, right? But without your health, as you'll know better than anyone, you haven't got shit, right? That needs to be the home base, I always say. Like, that's the foundation for everything else. And what you have to apply, right, in terms of discipline and making your self-care a priority, that transfers over into whatever you want to chase career-wise, right? So what are your kind of, what is it you really focused on? Like, what are your non-negotiables when it comes to your health and what you maybe Sleep. communicate to people? Sleep, yeah? Let's talk on that. I'm glad you said that. Is number one. I'm, I'm, a, I'm horrible if I if I don't have my sleep, and I reach a cutoff time. I'm a morning person. I reach a cutoff time sometimes where it's I've got to go to sleep right now, right this minute. I can't. You know, somebody else turn the lights off because I've got to go to bed right now. <laughs> um, I need my sleep. And, and and my son is not sleeping very well at the moment. And, and he said that he's going to sleep listening to podcasts. And I was trying to explain to him that your brain has to rest. It has to, it has to turn off. Not, it doesn't turn off, does it? But it has to regenerate. It has to work on all the stuff it's been learning all day. So it's ready and charged for the next day. I listen to thunderstorm noises. I literally, Alexa, Alexa. <laughs> Play thunderstorm noises for 20 minutes, volume three. And so most nights, that's what I do. And it turns me off because you have a lot of noise in your head sometimes when you go to bed, don't you? 100%. Yeah, massively. Yeah, yeah for me, it's uh, it's just like box breathing, literally 10 minutes, and then books. Like books are my thing. Like that is what really helps me unplug. It takes me into another dimension. It's so pleasurable for me, you know? It's almost like escape. Yeah. It just helps me wind down before bed. I track using an aura ring. Have you ever tracked your sleep before? Have you ever used any tools to track? I have. Um, I haven't got an aura ring. I don't, you know, where would I? I know, I know. That's not going to, I mean, fashion wise, you know what I'm saying? You are a model, you know, you got to consider these yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. I, I've it's a, done great, the, um, a great investment, though. It's one of the best investments. I know. I know. David's done the. Um, what was the other thing? The is thing that he wore. What is it? The whoop W H W O P whoop. He did. He whooped yeah, uh, really for, well. for a few years, but he's not whooping anymore. Not whooping anymore. No, he should get back. Whooping. No, but he does have. He has other things. I think his watch now does all of that. 
rarely, very rarely, maybe even once a year, he'll say, I can't exercise today because my watch told me. <laughs> Every now and then, yeah. Uh, and you're happy to hear that, aren't you? You're like, yes. I okay. love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, funny, isn't it? Does that you... mean that I'm going to get coffee in bed tomorrow morning? Because you're <laughs> because I, he's he's never the morning he's gone at 4 30 every morning he's gone yeah ex-military see it's a different it's a different mindset it's just like discipline is, is in his dna now you know i was just going to say with training what are you speaking of training what does your training regime look like i'd love to hear what that looks like um cardio and sh- i'm hoping you do some strength training you look like you do i don't i know i should and it just hasn't happened i know i should I okay. Know. Yeah, that's the next step for you, um, my friend. Hundred percent. I know. I absolutely I know. Um, but I I'm a strong believer in life just goes up and down. The things I was a runner, I think predominantly because we were moving so often, it was the easiest thing to do. You could just open the door and you could go wherever you lived. You didn't need a gym. And Getting your head around going to a gym mm. or even exercising at home, it's still a completely different ball game. Mm. I think I'm going to get back into spinning. I think this has got this is in my head at the moment. I haven't done spinning for a long time, but spinning where you're doing it more dynamically with uh, maybe a weight or a, you know a bit of dance okay. moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got got that on my radar at the moment, but I have been working on stretching. And even when I was a runner, I didn't stretch before running and I didn't stretch after running, ever. And now, having been to stretching classes and Pilates, I my body is bending in ways that I didn't think it would ever bend again. Um, so that is what I have been working on That's but incredible. i do believe there are phases i'm not sure as much as that 100 kilometer race is still in the back of my head that i want to do it in a faster time so never say never mm. but the weight phase hasn't hit me yet okay but so so basically so you're very active you're very active you do yoga uh, or pilates which one was it yeah, walk the dogs, very active. Um, but you mentioned about the osteoporosis and stuff, right? And obviously, it needs to be appropriate, right? Caroline, of course, you need to do it right because of that. But yeah, it's too late. Now is the time you need to start, honestly, because when we look at like longevity, muscles, the longevity organs, sarcopenia as well, that comes as you get older, you know, where your muscles start pairing, your body starts pairing down muscle. You know, muscle's the biggest organ in the body. I could keep going down the list, obviously, bone density, like I, I said. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, like, start sooner rather than later and have you ever thought about like maybe hiring a like an in-person pt because i know you've never done any have you ever thought about that to get you going so so you so you get that commitment level up and know what you're doing because that's really important or i I by the way i'm not trying to sell to you here my program's online anyway so i'm not trying to sell to you i can't do it personally i'm in australia unfortunately you know i said that there are phases a couple of years ago, I had have a friend who is a bodybuilder. And I thought, well, okay, I'll enter a bikini contest. <laughs> and I want to challenge myself because I love a challenge. I will do that. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but I'll do it. I'll get to a competition. So, you know, started Googling the bikinis and the shoes and all of that stuff. <laughs> I didn't like my body at all. It started changing and my clothes fitted differently. And yeah, I could see muscle tone, but I I was solid and I didn't like it. And, and it got me down. So I was doing a live with David one day and I turned to him and I said, we were talking about it and he was very supportive. And I said, by the way, I've stopped weights. I'm back running. He looked at me and he said, Thank God for that. Is that what he said, yeah? Yeah, because he didn't like my body. Okay, that's and interesting. How long were you lifting weights for at this point then? Um, Only about six, six, seven months. Six, seven months, right. And you noticed that you were getting more muscular, right? And it was More muscular, but I wasn't, it, it didn't feel like I was lean muscular. Not, not in my eyes, I wasn't runner lean. Mm. Yeah, I okay. had shape and I 
didn't I my shoulders were bigger and fitting differently in shirts and my bottom and my thighs I was if you saw me you would probably not think that I was big but for me I was not happy at all and David said a I didn't like your body like that and b you were not happy oh right okay interesting well that's the number one thing yeah, yeah, because obviously if you're not happy, then that rubs off on him then, then it, when you're in your own head, that's a nightmare for him. But then also, that's interesting, because I would have thought, because you you get tight, and a lot of it is like generational thing as well, right? Think about it. Like when you were, let's just say when you were in your 20s, 30s, right? It's skinny, right? That was the thing. All in the 80s and 90s, it was just skinny. Now it's like strong, big glutes like Kim Kardashian. Now things have changed, and lots of women are lifting heavy weights because they can see the health benefits as well. But that's like a... That's probably a bit of a dysmorphia thing as well. And because and you're more aware of it with modeling and stuff like that as well, right? So I feel like, do you feel like a lot of that might be, you've just admitted to it anyway, it's pretty much in your own heads, a lot of it. Then. it totally, totally yeah, yeah, yeah. in my head. I like to go uh, to a shoot and know that the clothes are going to fit me. And I know mm. being that I, I, I'm i going to use the term skinny because I do, do yeah, yeah. I am skinny. I'm healthy skinny. Yes, I know I need muscle. Um, and I will do that. I will do. I'm going to do that. Um, I even bought some weights actually, which David fantastic. Said, I yeah, this this and podcast came at the right time then. <laughs> Perfect. Down in Houston. Um, yes. So you yes, bought some I weights. Know what I've got to do. So you recently bought some I bought weights. weights and that, yeah, he said, "Can I borrow them?" And they went down to his office, and I haven't seen them again since. <laughs> there we are i'll hold you accountable for this now i'll follow up with this but look the thing is it doesn't have to be much either like even doing you know like two or three short like 20 30 minutes and i would argue even just starting with body weight you know starting with your own body weight and then building up to weights like i would say that would be the the best first step um but yeah you know and because the thing is you know it's like when you get older if you take a fall that's when it becomes a big issue that's when people don't yes. recover and then muscle falls off your body rapidly when you're lying in the bed and that's when you fall into big problems then, right? You know? So with the nutrition, though, I'd love to pick your brain on that. Like, what's your secret, my friend, right? Come on. I know you stay healthy. You stay move. You sleep. Nutrition-wise, what's going on there? What's going on? Food. Food, food, food. Um, I get messages. I, if I had a message from someone the other day saying, I'm unfollowing you because you're anorexic. So David and I did a, a little uh, Instagram thing about the fact that I'm not anorexic. And... Uh, I've had an anorexic friend and I know what that looks like. And I don't think I look anorexic. Um, protein, cheese, eat a lot of cheese and meat. And I eat vegetables, but every time I buy vegetables, I think of Dr. Chaffee. <laughs> <laughs> Plants are trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I had him on. <laughs> I know. Um, so I am going to do a fermentation course. I'm going to meet the guy. Um, Dr. Sean, I said, let's do a Zoom and we can both do some ferment fermenting together and then I'll make it into a video. And he messaged me and he said, fermenting isn't that easy. So perhaps you should buy fermented foods first. And I said, but I'm in Dubai. I don't think that that's possible. Went on to Google or whatever it was found there's this guy who lives half an hour away, has wow. a course on fermenting foods. So I'm meeting him on Friday. I need to get some more. I don't know if I'm going to like fermented food. Oh, I love it. Sauerkraut especially. It's just, it tastes I so good. I like sauerkraut. It's going to take some getting used well, to. So you can tolerate dairy, right? Obviously you have cheese. Can you tolerate like milk and stuff or are you okay? I don't with like, I don't, I've never liked the smell since we were at school and we had milk yeah. at school. And it was always slightly sour because you've been sitting outside. I've yeah. never liked milk then. But I uh, still love a bit of blue cheese. Nice. So so your fats then mainly come from like meat, eggs, cheese. Yes. And do you, do you eat like avocado and stuff like that? Or I do. We had avocado last night. We had steak, avocado, um, some mushrooms. They're going to kill me. And some spinach. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. The thing is, though, right, again, there's so much variance from person to person as well, right? And like, yes, eating animal based and stuff like that, and eating the most nutrient dense foods like meats is really important. But it's like, if you're thriving and you feel good eating, you know, a variety of other foods like avocado and some vegetables, you know, not getting gut issues, right? I would argue that it's not really a bad thing, is it? You know? 
it isn't, but if it can be better not to do it. Mm. But it, I'm assuming Dr. Chaffee has a fantastic meat producer just down the road or a freezer. Yes. Where he oh, yeah, he lives in Perth, that. right? So, yeah, they got all the best <laughs> meat. Yeah, 100%. Dubai, you can pay a premium for Wagyu. But a, how do you know it's really Wagyu? And B, how old is it? You know, when mm. did it get uh, not that age meat isn't, um, and that's a good thing, but still, you pay a premium, a huge amount of money to get good meat here. And I always try to buy happy meat. Mm. I call happy meat happy cows. Um, but it's still, when it says organic, you know that those labels aren't everything that they say they are. Mm. But the, long story short, though, you eat basically all whole foods, right? So you don't eat any ultra processed foods. I can see just by looking at you. Or rarely, is there anything like you have, like a, what's it called, like a vice? Whether it's chocolate, yeah. oh, the face says it all. <laughs> yes, I do love a Malteser. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Typical British thing. Maltesers are the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Double Decker, so, that was my favorite. Um, Double Decker, that was my all-time favorite that was back in the day. I never liked that. I liked a Topic back in the day. Topic, oh, old school. Topics are old school. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, good on the um, list there. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll um, I do like my Maltesers. Which, oh. if, if I'm going to have Maltesers, it'll be at the weekend. Uh, Monday to Friday, I am strict as can be. So I do not eat processed or um, sugar on Monday to Friday. Do you ever feel restricted? Do you ever feel in your head like restricted Monday to Friday, or do you feel good eating those foods? You don't feel like you're thinking about eating Maltesers. Uh, no? Oh yeah, I'm, occasionally I mean, we all do. 8 o'clock at night. Because we've had supper, we try to eat around 6.30. And I'll look at David and say, I'd love this chocolate right now. You don't keep it in the house, so I bet, right? Because that's the... That's oh, yeah, you... no. It's oh, yeah? oh, wow, that's, that's, that's self-control. Buying it is half the battle. So I'll buy it and put it away. Because then I know I've got it. You know, whereas if you haven't got it, it's kind of like, where can I get it? That, yeah, that's yeah. the way my head works. Where can I get it? Um, what if I can't get it? <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. You feel so safe. No, you feel safe when you got the Maltese in the background. It's like, okay, I can relax now. It's okay. I've got them there yeah, for one of them. That takes a exactly. lot of self-control, see, because like even me, you know, I, I, I tell clients not to. I'm very disciplined and stuff. But if I keep it in the house, I'm normally going to eat it. You know what I mean? It's like I, I don't, yeah. Like dark chocolate is my it thing. Is I love like dark that. chocolate. Yeah. David, David is like, yeah, I, and occasionally I hear a rustle. And yeah. I say, <laughs> uh, what's that? Nothing. <laughs> and then he found a packet of Garibaldi's in the back of the back of the cupboard. Wow. I was going to ask you just to kind of wrap this up, my friend. I wanted to ask you about like stress management and what kind of tools or coping mechanisms you have to help you really manage your stress and decompress and stuff. Um right. I can I can get down. There's no no doubt about that. Even on even on my happy pills, I can have a down day where it just would be easier to stay in bed and and it it can't it can be the silliest little thing too. It doesn't have to be anything big. Um but it's I guess it's hormones at the end of the day. So giving yourself that break. I think is important if you feel that way. But on the other hand, getting up and going out and doing something, if you are able, and especially speaking to somebody else, like meeting somebody for coffee, by the end of that coffee, you'll be in a different place. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but with a positive person, surrounding yes. yourself with people who lift you up not drag you down key words uh, there yeah. positive person yeah not the neg not the oh. opposite not the energy vampires because that's going to take you down to the bottom. absolutely boss. and i'm sure everybody knows one and and as horrible as it is you do have to cut them out of your life because they are not doing you any favors um you need to be lifted up by your friends not brought down so if you want to go gray for example and everybody is saying don't go gray it's aging you la 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 do what you want to do but maybe don't hang around with those people who are gonna try and force you to do the opposite to what you want to do mm. and when you say happy pills right just for the audience you mean is it like ssris if you don't mind if i ask serotonin salaprim. Salaprim. Is, that, is that like a serotonin reuptake kind of Inhibitor. Uh, it's anti an anti antidepressant. Antidepressant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, got you. yeah, yeah. 
Okay, yeah. got you. So you'll have some days where you, you feel a bit down or whatever. And your method then is like, sometimes you just listen to yourself and go, right, I'm just going to relax the day or whatever and just zone out. Yeah. But so from what you're saying though, because I, I agree with this as well. It's like almost you've got to go against what your body tells you sometimes, right? You know, sometimes we are like stress, you might feel lonely and you think I'll just go on my phone. That's the worst thing you can do a lot of the time. Just yeah. stay there and isolate. Those human interactions just crazy what it does for you, right? And I realize that now because all my business is online. I have a lot of these Zoom calls and stuff, but sometimes I can be a bit isolated from other than my my partner, that face-to-face -face interaction, you know? And it, I, I could have one conversation with someone who's a good person, of course, and feel like a different man, you know? Come away feeling did like you, did, didn't you find that over COVID? Oh my god, I was it was during COVID that I realized that I feed off other people. I mm. need to touch people, I need to be near people, and and that I missed that. David was so happy the whole of COVID drove me insane. Can you just be unhappy for one day? Can you come down here with me and just be, be sad? <laughs> but no, he was happy every day. He was Zooming with people. He was doing exercise classes. He was all <laughs> he was living the dream. <laughs> we we, 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 we um, were running up and downstairs. We did the, um, the Burj Khalifa challenge. So we got a, a group of people on Zoom and we ran up and down the stairs, I don't know, 92 times or something, the mm. height of the Burj Khalifa. Wow. Um, but... It was yeah, COVID it was, was an interesting one. Time. It was weird because for me, I'm actually I'm very in, I'm, I'm I've got like a, an extreme balance of both almost. Like when I'm around, like you say, people and good people, especially people that I like, I'm like an extrovert. I'm like you know the energy in, of the room, you know. But when it comes to, I'm also very introverted as well. So I kind of use that. That's when I actually built my business and everything. During COVID, I hired a mentor, literally just as the whole lockdown happened. And I just like used that to my advantage. And I was just literally isolated. I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time, all online, on my phone, grinding nonstop. And, it, and that's all I did, really. Uh, but then I realized it got to a point after like, you know, it was like a good kind of five or six months where I didn't really see many of the people I did. Um, because I still had, I was still PT in at that point as well. And I made the transition to online during like a three month period when COVID happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I noticed after a while, I'm like, wow, this is going a bit too far now. And it's almost like you can feel it, right? I start noticing, I just start feeling down and I start feeling stressed and off. And I realize, okay, maybe I'm isolating myself a bit too much now. I've got to make an effort to go and to go and be around some friends, you know? And I think that's this day and age, loneliness is like an epidemic now, right? And a lot of people here listening back, they need to hear that, right? You need to, having one coffee and a chat can be game changing when you're feeling down, yes. you know? Yes, there is. It, it is not good. We, we are not built to be insular. Um, mm. We need a village. And villages are disappearing. 100%, 100%. Hey, really enjoyed this chat, my friend. It's great when I can have conversations like this where it just feels like I'm having a conversation. Like I forgot I was yeah. doing a podcast at times, which is always good. I'm I'm <laughs> Fantastic. Um, can I just say one thing? I just want to, um, lots of people say to me, um, you're so lucky, you're beautiful. Uh, for me, with all the people that I meet, it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside because beauty comes from inside. Eye contact, like we were just talking about. If you are alive, lit up, passionate inside, it will come out of your eyes and you will be more approachable to people. And it doesn't matter what you look like. You will draw people to you. And that, that is the, the most important thing trying to find your passion, being excited about life and meeting people. Let's talk about that. Like just real quick, right? Because I'm just aware of your time. I got all the time in the wall, right? Because I could talk to you forever. But just on that, that's a really important point you just touched on then. It's like, you know, filling your cup up, self-care, taking care of yourself from the inside out, right? And then you attract what you want to, I know it sounds kind of woo woo, but it is the truth, right? That's when you, and finding your passion, just let's just talk on that, right? Cause like a lot of people, they hear that, they probably hear that. And they're like, you know, like you say, you have coffees with people, right? And they're like, I've got kids, I haven't got time, etc. You know, I always say to people, like, I think people make such a big deal, like sometimes out of things where it's like, if you can just take the first step towards something, that's big. But a lot of people, they try and they look at the whole wall of whatever their passion is or what they want to achieve. And they just get overwhelmed. We just got to build that wall brick by brick, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on a roundabout and I will take a turning and maybe it's the wrong turning. Maybe it's a dead end, uh, T-junction, whatever. 
it doesn't matter what road you go down, you can always go back and go up another road or get back on that roundabout until you feel safe enough to get off it again. And people say, well, what, what, what are you, what do you do? What, what's your, what's your thing? I say, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. I don't, when I grow up, I say, um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. There, there is something ahead of this and I don't know what it is, but I know it's bigger and better than now. And I'm excited about it. That's the key thing, isn't it? It is. And you may, I'm 59. And it, as long as I start my weightlifting, I should <laughs> be able to move forward and, um, you know, with strength um, and do anything well into my um, old age. 100%. Yeah. No, I mean, this is inspiring for people, right? Because as you say, you know, you've literally, well, from what you've said, you've like turned your life around or, or just took your life to a whole new level in your 50s, right? And I think that's so inspiring and, and, and empowering. It's about myself. Yeah. Yes. I, because women are kind of left in the lurch because they've been wives. Uh, they've gone through menopause, which has tend to, which bashes them down. And then they come out the other side or even they're in the middle of it. It's like, what what is life about? Where do I go? What? Who even cares about me? It's a, it's a, it can be a really just distressing time, but you can come out the other end or you can be in middle age and do whatever you want. Life is not over. It's just beginning. 100%. It's just a mindset shift. And as you say, getting around the right people. You only need one person, really. That's what I, I would argue. You only need like one person. Like it was almost... And I say mentor, I don't mean like, you know, will you be my mentor? It's not like that. It's just like someone you look up to who can inspire you, who essentially has got something you want to work towards. It could be an absolute game changer, right? That's why these podcasts are so powerful. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a long-term friend. People come in and out of your lives for a reason. You learn good or bad stuff from them. So don't feel, uh, as long as it's um, reciprocated, don't feel you're using someone. Go, ask questions, learn, and you know, move on from that. You don't have to, to meet somebody and they'll be a lifelong friend. Although my husband is my best friend and he is my, he's my person. And that's the way it should be as well. I'm uh, just reading the book now. Have you heard of, ever heard of Dr. Arthur Brooks? Uh, no, my husband yeah. would know. I oh, yeah, know I'm sure he will because he's like he's like the leading happiness expert, right? But he's done all the research on. He's just written a book with Oprah. Uh, I always forget what it's called. It's like trying to find. Yeah. Something. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah. Anyway, oh. he says that he says no, no. It has to be your 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 partner or your husband has to be uh, a friend, right? That's all right. Be quiet. <laughs> Sorry. Where can the audience? Because oh, we could do a whole other. I was just thinking when you were saying that. We'll have to do a whole other episode on that, on like finding purpose, passion, and what you were saying about taking the first step and being in your fifties and you know reaching your full potential. We could do a whole other episode on that. But where can the audience find you, Caroline? Uh, Instagram uh, is my main uh, focus. Takes most of my day. I do respond to your messages, and uh, I've got some YouTube videos. Uh, I have a website. Um, I'm on people's podcasts. Uh, just Google it, and I'm 59, not 60. <laughs> exactly. When are you 60? Just curious. July. I'm July. Oh, Ju July to what? Same. July to what? 31st. Fourth from the 30th. One oh. day. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No wonder yeah. we get on. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Leo was the king of the jungle. Mum always told me that, right? And I think that gave me so much pride telling me I was the king of the jungle from a young age. <laughs> Good and bad. <laughs> I used to say to you, you know, in those wildlife magazines, the mother lion just whacks the lion cub. That's that's what I used to say. I'm a lion. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll add all of the uh, all of your, your, your handles and your website and stuff into the show notes anyway. But thanks for your time, my friend. It was really, really great to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you do still sound English. You don't sound Australian. Yeah, I'm Welsh, actually, but... 
Sorry, sorry, I apologize. I know, you got to be careful with that one. <laughs> the beginning, you don't sound that Welsh. No, I'm I know, sure I know. A hundred percent. No, I don't sound Welsh. Like most people think I sound, unfortunately, now I know I'm only joking, but people think I sound like more kind of English. But I think it's because my accent is weird now because I've been in Oz for like six and a half years. So I've got like this right. weird kind of mixed up accent now. So it's just strange. No, it's a good one. <laughs> Actually, real quick on that, Sean O'Mara, he was saying, you know, he's like super, he doesn't miss a thing, does he? He was like, that's so fascinating how you've got the accent. He said, that's interesting. How have you got the accent? Because normally from a young age, that's really interesting, he was saying, you know, because you don't normally lose accents at your age. And he was like doing a deep dive into it. I'm pretty sure it was Sean anyway. He got yeah, he, he, he would have gone off and researched it too. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. All right. Thank you, Caroline. Um, so much value in this episode. Thank you so much. Thank you.